We are so excited to have my good friend, Lori Harder. Thank you so much for coming, Lori. So oh, I'm so it. excited to be yeah. here. So happy you're we here. We get Rosé in the morning. So I know. <laughs> I know. This is the way she wakes up. Literally. Right? Yes. Hey. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so author, transformational expert. Um, I mean, you do it all. Podcasts, 5 million mm. downloads. You know, what are you most excited about right now? Oh, man. There's so many exciting things. Yeah. I, I like to do a lot of different things. It keeps me, you know, entertained in that creative like, I just need creativity to feel good. But most excited is probably the book because I just touched it. Mm. And I feel like I have been doing this for like four years. Oh, yeah. I have so <laughs> much work. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so yes. And the editing is so endless. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. You just have to decide to cut it off at some point. Totally. You do. Or it could be like a lifelong yeah. thing. So tell us about the book. Uh, the book is called A Tribe Called Bliss. And it is based on developing tribes. It's for women. So it's based on developing tribes that support you through all phases of your life. So really learning to go deep instead of just all of the surface talk um, and understanding how to create a sisterhood that not only supports what you want to do in your life, but also supports your personal growth. Mm -hmm. Because I believe you're only going to go as far as you're willing to grow. And if your tribe isn't willing to grow either, you're going to outgrow them. So how do you grow together and really go deep together? Wow. I feel like that's the total future of, of everything online. And I know today is about dating relationships and whatever, but I so I don't want to go too deep into that. But I too believe that tribes are, it's the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. Like in social media and everything, the thought of having a million followers, I think is out in my opinion. I think it's about building a very, very strong community. So I can't wait to read your mm, book. Incredible. I'm really excited. Well, tell me about building those relationships in your community, whether beyond romantic relationships, but your sisterhood. Who's mm -hmm. in your tribe? Oh, uh, you know, I have a lot of different tribes now because the reason that it started is because um, originally I was raised in a really strict religion. And once I basically left that tribe, I didn't have anyone because I never built anything outside of that. I was never allowed to. When did you leave your tribe? Um, that tribe? Yeah, when I was about 18 years old. So after being out of that, it was like I had nobody and every, it, completely alone for the most part. Mm -hmm. So at that point in my life, I realized that you need people and you need a lot mm -hmm. of different people because as you're growing and as your beliefs change, how do you have those people through the transitions in your life to make sure that you're being supported? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So powerful. And I love this discussion around the tribe thing. I think sometimes it's very valued because a tribe and having close personal relationships sometimes prevents you from getting into relationships simply from a place of loneliness. Yes. I mean, I have, Absolutely. I've, I've mm -hmm. seen that, I had that experience so myself and I've noticed mm -hmm. other people have that experience. You know, you get into a relationship simply because you're lonely and mm -hmm. then it ends up being the wrong right. relationship and you just pull, take, take, right. take from the other person. Yeah. So speaking of, you're married. We hear that you have a pretty <laughs> great marriage. I do. And it's been a lot of work. So yeah. <laughs> how did you meet your husband? Uh, we met at the gym. Uh, you know, where you meet all where great people. <laughs> I received that compliment. Which gym is this? Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm looking for you need to come, come through. Come through, Aaron. I got you. I got you. We got I'm you. you. Yes. It is. It really is. Because you're there in the morning. You're working out. You know what their priorities are. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's fantastic. So, um, but yeah, we met in the gym in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tiny, tiny little oh. town. Oh. Yeah. Go, go Packers. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm not moving there. So <laughs> no, don't go yeah. there. Yeah. I moved yeah. away. I'm just kidding. I love you. Um, yeah. But we met, we met in the gym and honestly, at first we were not, I, I wasn't interested. I was in a really, I was 21 years old. I was in a really funky place in my life. I had just moved back in with my parents, which I swore I would never do. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really, and I was getting out of another relationship and I wanted nothing to do with relationships at that moment. So the poor guy comes up to me and he was actually, cause it's such a small town. You guys, it was like a, a new woman was there. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you had a third guy that came up. That has never happened. <laughs> And the one right before him, his name was Jake, but it was tattooed on his arm. And he was oh. like, hey, my name's Jake. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And poor Chris oh. comes up right after wow. Jake. And he's just like, <laughs> not I gotta go. Yeah. Oh, no. Isn't that so, when it happens, though? So when oh. someone does not want a relationship, they're like, I'm never, ever going to be in a relationship. So what, totally. what convinced you to leave the I don't want this relationship space and pursue something with him? You know, he was really persistent, thank God. Um, but at the time, he was willing to just stick around and be friends. And wow. at the time, that's exactly what I needed. And we had fun. Mm. Like, we just hung out and laughed. And for me, um, you know, looking back, the biggest thing for me is I want to have fun and I want to laugh in, in all mm -hmm. of my relationships. It's my top actual feeling that I choose. Oh, wow. It's fun and laughing. 
So looking back, it was like that was the one thing with him that always came through is for the rest of my life, I want to have fun and I want to laugh. Wow. And wow. that it was like probably six months of just friendship where I was not interested. And one day it just hit me like a lightning bolt. We were actually at a buffet. You know, that's yeah, yeah. usually yeah. when you have like your vaults in Fall in love. <laughs> totally. And I was sitting across from him and we were like snorting, laughing. Yeah. And it was like this lightning bolt. And I was like, oh my God, like I got nervous because oh, all of a sudden wow. it sh felt like a shift. Wow. And I was like, is it well, the general Charles yeah. chicken or what yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was in that? Bad chicken. Yeah. Or what's yeah. going on? What was in that um, moose? But it, all of a sudden, because I think it was just that realization of what I was going for because I was really you know kind of you're 21 right I'm into that bad boy phase I wanted like that athlete artsy edgy snowboarder guy that I had gone for before which just was not working for me yeah. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden I was just having the best time of my life and it was easy wow. so things just shifted like wow I I'm actually falling in love for a completely different reason it's like, incredible wow. I, I do have a question because mm -hmm. I'm sure it hasn't always been easy in this relationship oh god no so how yeah. do you get back to the have fun, let's laugh? Because it's not always fun. Mm. You know, I think when you have a solid connection like that, when you know it's possible, you need to be committed to the idea. And the thing about Chris and I is we have always communicated something about that. Well, actually, I know what it is. He's always made me communicate. <laughs> 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 So I have love. learned because what I used to do in relationships is when they would go awry or we'd fight, I would leave. Mm -hmm. Really great way to solve things, oh, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I with you. I do the same thing. I'd be like, I'm out of here. You know, yeah. I'm yeah. whatever. Do I'm driving not. away. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that solves nothing. It only lets you stew, obviously, and lets you be like, go back to your old default, which mine was, I'm better alone. I'm fine alone. I'm right. strong. I can do this. I can handle mm -hmm. this. I've been alone before. But it wasn't working for me. You know, the things we say are working are actually the things that are like holding us back from what we, where we need to go. So for him, he was one, it was one time he goes, if you walk out that door, if you leave this conversation, don't bother coming back because you, we are not communicating. Like wow. this isn't working for us. It's so interesting because, uh, you know, traditionally it's often worked the other way. Yeah. You know, generally men um, communicate less. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, you know, and women tend to communicate more. And uh, that's something that I work with clients on. It's so interesting to hear it the other mm. way around. Were you always a communicator? Is that something that you, I no, mean, always I not was, a communicator, I mean? I was always not a communicator. Yeah. I was very much like I wanted to keep the peace in my family, so I just really kept everything to myself. And he was basically raised by his mother. I mean, his father was there, but he was traveling all the time. Um, so his mom is like the biggest communicator. So they would just go on these long wow. car rides all the time and just talk and talk and, and talk. Now and now you are a professional yeah. communicator. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> You've got so podcasts. Right. Like, yeah. You went from walking away to like, let me tell the world. Yes. You know, it's because we teach what we need the most, for sure. Mm. So I learned, I went from not communicating at all to learning what it actually looks like to start communicating. So I can teach on what this is going to look like mm -hmm. doing it because it's not going to be fun. It's going to feel like an inner temper tantrum. Like whenever you sit down and someone wants to communicate with you, you're like, no. <laughs> that's that's right. what you do, you know? So really communicating though, it's amazing what happens when you can start to learn each other's communication mm -hmm. styles. And I heard you guys talking about that over there and I, I loved it because once once we understood what the styles were and what the other one needs and that I might need a little bit of space and I might need a few questions to start getting into it, um, and that that is just my default of protection of running away. It's mm, not okay. even it's not even something with him, right? It's never something with them. It's always something with us. Mm -hmm. So really learning to give each other that space and time and then that time to communicate as well. Wow. So for him and I, it'll be I mean, we just got in a fight yesterday. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, was it really fantastic? Now that you have the tools, you're you like, know, bring it on, bring it on. You know what though? We work together too. So we have we have Monday like team meetings as well. And yesterday was kind of more of our Monday because we're getting back into work after the holiday. And I think that we were both just like because we both have these 
passions, obviously, and he does more of the numbers and business end, and I'm more like wanting to lead from my heart. And for, for him, it's like, what's the numbers? How many people? What's going on? And I'm like, I am not going to be able to do what I do if I am thinking oh, about the no. number of people. So we'll often like have mm. these little fires, but I always say a bunch of little fires are better than like a raging, you know, explosion. Yeah. So if you can view it that way, like it's just two passionate people coming together as long as you don't leave it. So for us, we do walks at the end of almost every single night. And the first, and they're about 60 minutes, we go walk our giant golden doodle dog named Waffles. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, <laughs> Waffles is a surprising human. You have no uh, idea. Yeah. And really. she's therapy as well, because yeah. you can talk through her. Like you can, you know, yeah. he can say yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of wild, actually. Yeah, Waffles yeah. thinks this about you right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but do you really feel like that physical activity of just like walking and getting out of your workspace or your home? helps you in that? Yes. Um, you know, the, the top three things I believe are, are growth, communication, and play. And as far as communication goes, you need to understand that you're not going to communicate right away. Like you almost need to physically move it through your body. So, you know, we know we all go to the gym, we all go work out and it's like you don't even feel like yourself until the first 20, 30 minutes of moving and your brain starts to move, get different, a different perspective. Yeah. Right. You know, you start to feel differently about what you, how you felt inside of your home or having that argument. It's like change your environment and go move your body because right. you are going to gain such a different perspective. I don't remember which president it was, but whenever he would have a big um you know decision that he would have to make or when he would have someone come in for a meeting they would go walk around because that was the only That's way so they interesting. Make i mean even for me just walking down the street it, like i didn't realize this but it does help me clear my mind mm -hmm. even in like communication or fighting in relationships like i need to get out of here mm -hmm. and take a walk for a second yeah. just mm -hmm. to, like breathe. i want to hear more about that. we actually have to take a break but mm. i couldn't agree more being external versus internal mm. in our mind chatter in the in the total entanglement of whatever emotions are going on getting external going out is so wonderful when we come back what i really want to hear i want to hear also a little bit more about this and i want to hear also about your three tips mm. to your success really breaking it down for everyone so stay tuned you guys we will be right back in la la land i'm dr aaron i'm rob Mack. and i'm jasmine Royer. monday through friday we are going to be streaming to you live los angeles america's first live streaming daily talk show 9 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Oh, and we have a sexy show for you today. We have got Will, Leanne, and Gabe in the house. Let's Hello. go back up. Hi! Talk to four beautiful, intelligent, conscious women. Clearly, I was miserable the entire time. <laughs> She has a TV show similar to your guys. Ellen. Yes! Woo! Yes! yes. Woo! The little peck. Come on. I feel so bad for Jess. We're, li we're live for the, the people viewing. Yeah. For the people viewing. Wow! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E Club Mickey Mouse. Oh, good morning. La La Land. streaming to you live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Happy holidays. It's gonna be a good, good morning. Good morning, La La Land. Five, six, seven, eight. We are the Musketeers, and we proudly wear our ears. We mousing, hey, hey. We mousing, hey, hey. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, go Mickey Mouse. Good morning, La La Land. Good morning, La La Land, with some Friday feels. And I want to give a special shout out to Leone Candeli for this fabulous candle. 
talking romance and relationships, and it's very sensual, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. 500 hours burns for 500, 500 hours. hours <laughs> Longer than most of my relationships. <laughs> <laughs> By far. What's the tone? About 499 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, supposedly this might help those relationships because it releases these negative ions that cleans and detoxes mm. the air. It's all natural. It's beeswax. So maybe Rob needs to take this. That's I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just pour it over myself. Is that what I need to do? Pour the hot wax all over myself. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, Lauren, we were talking before about three tips. I mean, you have a great relationship with your husband. Clearly, you have done a lot of work. And we want to know three your three kind of mm. secrets. Okay. So... There's three, but there's a lot of different things sure. under the three. <laughs> so growth, communication, and play. And I really think growth is the number one because you are only going to grow as far as you're both willing to go. So in a relationship, it's never about how you are, you know, if you're reliant on the other person or what that person is giving to you. It is simply about two whole people coming together um, in order to create an incredible relationship. So... As far as growth, Chris and I have committed to always personally growing. Hmm. Uh, so I'm always working on myself. He's always working on himself. And that's just an agreement in the relationship. And when I say uh, growth, it's really about knowing that you both have that agreement mm -hmm. to grow together. So to grow separately and also together. So it's not like Tom Cruise, like you complete me, that whole thing. No. Never. Jerry Maguire complex, baby, no? <laughs> you complete me, oh my gosh. You know, so, yeah. it sounds really so nice. Yeah, beautiful what you said, though, that you, you've made the commitment and agreed to grow separately, but you're also growing together. Because yes. so many times in relationships, you, you grow separately and you grow apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're right. making a conscious effort to grow together. It, yes. And it's interesting. I, I, I often wonder if it's that people grow apart or they just go apart. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're growing. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I don't know. I'm interested to find that out. But I do think that you can, you know, because I see a lot of, especially with friends in the personal development arena, we have a lot of different couple friends and some are growing together and some are growing apart. But I do, the ones that I see are kind of growing apart. One has either decided not to do anything while the other they're in this growth trajectory oh, um, or they're they're both growing but one's going in a really you know maybe I have a friend who's a super spiritual yogi but the other one is very just business and like a, a different style mm -hmm. so I do think that you either are and I also believe in you know kind of like soul contracts so maybe they fulfilled their contract within what they were meant to do for each other mm -hmm. yeah. so but always coming back to check in with each other Agreed. so that's mm -hmm. what our walks are is kind mm -hmm. of those check-ins like where you at how you feeling like I, I know that I want to do you know with Chris and I it was like I know I want to do ballroom dancing I knew I wanted to do that I would love for you to come with me and do some classes with me are you willing to grow with me in this area because I do think this is an area where I'm gonna want to spend Such, a lot of time you in. will do so well you have the body for it it's we did it dance. we thank you oh, we did it <laughs> but it was like it was that communication of do you want to go here with me this is really important to me and then him saying how important is it? Like, am I going to miss out on that? Yeah, yeah really. He's yeah. like, I really have to wear that leotard. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Chris can pull it off. No, but it's, I mean, which brings you to, you know, the third tip of play. Mm. I mean, then you're dancing together. You're playing together. Yes. Playing is so vital because when you play, you tap into a part of yourself that basically... Okay, so a long time ago, I heard this of this book. It was called How to Cheat on Your Husband with Your Husband. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. We love yeah. her. Yeah. Just last so week. I, love, I love that concept yes. because what's happening is you're both becoming new when you're playing. You're mm -hmm. becoming like two different types of people, and it's this side that you don't get to see in the monotony of life. Even if your life is great, you're still doing the same thing every single day over and over for the most part. You fall into these same rituals, and play is like this free space with no... No boundaries, no real rules, and you're you're getting excited again. Well, I know and, by that person, Andrea Sertash, who wrote that book. She also said you have to be your vacation self. Yeah, totally. And that's so interesting because typically in my real life, I'm not my vacation self. Mm. And you play so much differently if you go into that space. Mm -hmm. Then you can actually cheat on your husband with your husband. Right. Right. Okay. Just yeah. vacation yeah. self is right here. The champagne. That's what champagne is for. Put down the right? coffee. Get the champagne. <laughs> Andrew is really brilliant, brilliant. I love yeah, shout out to many, Andrew, many, many books, gosh. right? Yeah, shout fantastic. Out. For mm -hmm. sure. And what I love, one of the things I love about what you just said, and I love countless things that you said, but one of the things I love most is that we often think about growth as always being painful. Mm. And I think it's a, I think what you're saying there to a large extent is that growth can be playful and it can be enjoyable and it is all intended to make for a happier life 
both personally mm -hmm. and professionally in all in all ways and so mm -hmm. growth the end goal of growth is increasing happiness yes right mm -hmm. so and you talk about that a lot in the podcast too right earn your happy yes yeah mm -hmm. so can you talk to us a little bit about what the pad sort of how the podcast started and what do you could have sort of cover there? Yeah, five million yes. downloads. downloads. Hello. Yeah. So where did this all start? Where did this all start for you? You know what? It, it literally started because it was a super selfish thing. I wanted. I was at home, and when I say selfish, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> but um, I was at home. I found myself doing a lot of the same stuff. So even though I'm an entrepreneur who has a lot of things going on, it can fall into the same routine and. And I realized that working from home and not seeing a lot of people, I wanted to have more rich, in-depth conversations and have access to these people who just yeah. light my brain up. And I was like, how am I gonna do, like, how is this person gonna wanna talk to me for an hour? <laughs> I was like, a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what a yeah, great totally. excuse. So totally. I just, I get on people who just, either it's either been a book that I love or just something that has just shared and changed my life. Um, and we have conversations about things that I think people aren't necessarily talking about. So uh, uncomfortable stuff, the growth stuff, where things fall apart, um, that you do have to earn your happiness every single day, um, mm. that most people aren't innately happy. Uh, and that it's a choice. It's something that you have to grow into and you have to choose for your daily life and you have to wake up to it and, and think about it. So most people who are the happiest in the world have gone through the biggest struggles. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the happy people who've gone through the struggles is they're typically not sharing them because they're happy. So people look at it and say, oh, they have a charmed life. Yeah. Right. Oh, they're so blessed. Oh, so yeah. And it's like, they probably have underneath just so many you know, mm -hmm. hardships that they've gone through. That's so interesting because I just tripped. I just <laughs> tripped and I literally was like, oh wow, I feel happy. I feel like that was right, it. right. I when tripped. I started being real happy and, and fulfilled, and I would go speak, and people would say, you need to tell more relatable stories yeah. and tell about your hard times. Like, well, I'm over that stuff. Totally. So I had to come back down to yeah. getting to those, the transition. And it's so, I'm sure that's what you. Yeah, and props to you for about. doing that because honestly, that's the that's the hard part because happy people don't want to go back into the dirt right, right. we don't want to go back into the muck and i think that's whenever i get on a stage i'm like oh my god i have to go there I know, right? because like, you don't want to but that's the warrior work is being mm -hmm. able to go back and feel it and write that book and get into the feelings and get back to that place that brought you to the high to share that journey and so I think how did that's... you earn your happy lori oh earn yeah. so many different ways but you know it's really learning about what those rituals are and what the setup is to what is the mindset of the people who are the happiest? And it's really waking up for me every single day and choosing it and having the I get to do that attitude instead of I have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and really looking at all the things in your life as there was a day that I once wished to be this busy. There was a day that I once wish I had all these emails. There was a day that I wish that these people were asking me to do all these extra things. Um, and then also learning that part of happiness is having really fierce boundaries and mm -hmm. also oh, letting go so of people, true. you know? Very true. Yeah, Talk a little bit about, more about part. that. So, and what do you mean by boundaries? Boundaries. So, yeah. Boundaries are probably one of the toughest things for people and also women because a lot of us uh, have been raised, if, if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, um, to people please. And that's how we get love, right? It's like, the more I say yes to you, the more you're gonna love me. And if I say no to you, that might mean that you don't love me anymore, or you don't need me. So boundaries are huge. Like the second you, you start saying no to make room for your yeses, mm -hmm. it's like, that's the moment that you start to think, people might not love me. I might not be liked. I might not be asked to this party again if I don't bring those cupcakes or... Absolutely, that <laughs> resonates with me yeah. so deeply. I'm mm. classically overcommitted in yes. my life because mm -hmm. if I have, an hour of free time and somebody says, oh, can you do this? Yes. Mm. I was taught you just say yes, mm -hmm. you do it. So I'm gonna challenge you to think, do you like this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, tee it up, tee it up, Lori. The coaching coming through right now. Brace yourself, Jessalyn, brace yourself. So think of your ultimate relationships in your life. And I'm gonna challenge you just to think about if you showed up more you, fully you, fully recharged, fully 100% in your essence because you are rested you've done the things that like feed your soul and fuel who you are like imagine how those will grow and how how those will flourish if you set those boundaries on all of those little things that aren't actually aligned you know so how do you get over the guilt mm. of doing that for yourself talking to a lot it, it, so the podcasting has helped me with this with talking to so many people to know <laughs> that guilt is a part of it mm. and like forgiving that guilt and saying no this is for a higher purpose 
like always aligning back up right with that higher purpose so having literally writing out like maybe a statement of what your highest purpose is for yourself which will trickle into your relationships and always with every single decision going back to that question does but, this match that but what if it's somebody asking for help mm, mm -hmm. right how do you keep that boundary so you can't sometimes you have to realize that those people are either a not meant to get help or meant to get help from you because the biggest it's like robbing someone of their rock bottom right so mm -hmm. they need to go through whatever they need to go through and especially if it's a serial person who asks for help right mm -hmm. you can look at kind of who is asking for help is it so your soul will know if you actually mm -hmm. say am i meant to help this person or is this somebody who's probably not going to take the help so ask yourself a few questions is this person person actually going to take this help can they get help any other way do they need to go through this on their own and letting that be because a lot of times we take it on right yeah, yeah absolutely you take it on and then you have no more time or energy left for yourself right and then you can get resentful if they don't oh, take oh yeah, yeah. So you're, like, yeah. you're angry and you're resentful which doesn't help anybody because then you're helping them and you're mad about it oh yeah it. i went right. through like a huge resentful stage i was like <laughs> just keep helping the same people and i was like oh, so actually i started looking at it and i was like i'm getting like hits like dopamine hits off of helping exactly people who right. i know aren't using this help mm. so then it became really looking at me and saying i'm addicted to almost like abusing myself mm -hmm. like to draining myself i'm addicted to the stress i'm addicted to almost this martyrdom of i i help everyone except i'm dying right yes. yeah so on that note i think there's probably a lot of people mm. out there that want your help and we have we're running out of time unfortunately <laughs> guys so i want to like go on with this whole thing how can they find you how can they learn more about mm. your podcast your husband's podcast this project how can they begin to have these conversations because it really is just a conversation right mm. Tiffany's that are happening mm -hmm. right here people can have every day by tuning into your podcast mm, thank you so much um, the podcast is earnyourhappy.com so you can go there and download um, my husband's is for the love of money.com and that is really about revamping your money mindset because if you want to do anything with passion in the world and you want to put your message out there and help people you have to have the money to do it right so that's really resetting your money mindset and then I also have an event that is called the bliss project so that is the bliss project info and that is a week Weekend dedicated to uh, women who want to shift their life in three days. Really, wow. sign me up. Yes, yeah, no, seriously, I would love to come <laughs> and talk about that and have, like bring you back on and what the journey is all about. Mm -hmm. Share it. I would love that. Women. Be wonderful. Yeah, that would okay, be awesome. I'm so thank you so much. For oh, all thank your time. you guys. You're, You're all so amazing. Such I could talk a gorgeous, to you all day. <laughs> true, true beauty inside and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking forward to meeting your husband. Looking forward to a journey all together. Just. You know, we want to discover more and more about your whole thing because it's it's very very impressive, mm. very impressive. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so that's a new word. Like, yeah. 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 So, uh, we have to go right now, but we're going to come back. When we come back, we're going to do a little recap of the last month. We have an epic month and taking us into the new year. So stay tuned, you guys.